Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. This week, I want to share with you how you can style and bottom align the read more links for blog pages in Squarespace 7.1. Now, keep in mind that I'm going to be breaking down how you can apply this customization to the basic grid blog, but you can absolutely adapt the code to any other layout that you're working with. So if you're to learn how to implement this on your current project, make sure to keep on watching. Alrighty, so here I have my blog page in 7.1 and I have a couple of blog posts with the read more link showing. So let's go ahead and get started by styling this read more link a little bit because right now it just sort of blends in with the excerpt text. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and then we're going to take a look at how we can target this read more links inside this page so that we can start modifying it. So here, if we take a look, I landed directly on this a link that has a class of blog more link. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this class to be able to target this container because this is the one that I want to modify. You can see here that this is holding the text. So let's go ahead and target that. But I don't want to keep it just like that. I don't want to keep it this simple because I want to make sure that I'm only targeting the blog more link within this type of blog layout. So let's go ahead and look through a couple of different parent containers to see where I can find a class that refers to this type of grid basic layout. So if I look here, we can see that, well, here there's one called block basic grid text. So this would definitely work. Uh, let's see what else we can find. We have block basic grid container, and then we have block basic grid, and then we just have a couple of other just general classes. I think I'm actually going to go with this one block basic grid. So I'm just going to grab this one and include that inside my selector. And just like that, I'm targeting the block more links within this type of specific block layout. So if I were to have other block pages with different layouts, those read more links wouldn't get modified. So let's go ahead and get started by just, I don't know, maybe let's just add a background color. So background color. So I'm just going to add this little hex code that I already copied in here, this sort of navy color. And then let's go ahead and change the color of the font to white because I want to be able to see it. Um, let's see what else. Maybe we can add a little bit of a padding. So let's do padding, I don't know, 0.5 EM and then YM. That looks pretty good. I think I'm also going to make the font weight here a little bit bolder. So font weight bold. And I think that's pretty much it style wise. Now, of course, if you want to modify more things in here, you could if you want to set everything to uppercase, you could use text transform uppercase. If you want to modify the font family, you could use that font family property as well. If you want to modify the font size, font size would work here too. But personally, I think I'm just going to keep it this way. Now, the other thing that I actually want to change here is I want to remove that little underline that right now is not really visible because it's not set to white. However, you can see that there's a little bit of an extra gap down here that is making the text look a little bit sort of like lopsided. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can get rid of that underline. So if we look into the A element itself, we're going to see that here on the right side, there's not really like a border property, a background image property. There's not a text decoration property either. So it seems like the underline is not really applied to this element. In fact, if we take a look at the HTML, you're going to see that after that read more text, we have this after pseudo element and this after pseudo element. If we take a look here on the right side, you're going to see that this one has a height of one pixel and then it has a transform of minus three pixels, which doesn't really matter. Um, and then this has a background color that matches the color of the original Navy font. So this little after pseudo element is actually that underline that we see underneath read more links for blog pages, at least in 7.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target this and then I'm going to set it to display none so that we don't actually see it on the page anymore. I'm going to grab this lector. And then, like I said, because I only want to make the modification for this type of layout, I'm going to include this other block basic grid selector inside my code. And then if I set this to display none, you're going to see how the underline is now gone. Now, if you wanted to keep things this way, if your goal is only to style those links as buttons and you want to add a little bit of space in between the text and the button, what you can do is go back into your block more link. And then here you can just add a little bit of a margin to the top. So maybe something like 30 pixels should do. And just like that, you're ready to go. 
Now, on the other hand, if you wanted to make sure that these read more links align to the bottom of each of these block items, then we're going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to remove this margin at the top here. And then I'm going to save this. And then we're going to take a look at how this is built to see how we can push those buttons downwards. So if I look here through my inspector tool, we're going to see a couple of containers. Now, this is sort of like the main section container for this part of the block page. We can see the section border and the content wrapper, as always, in 7.1. And then we have a couple of containers. This one block basic grid, the class that we're using in here. So this one is pretty much creating the grid for this block page. And then here we have a couple of other containers. So each of these article elements, you can see how it corresponds to the different items that we have inside this block page. And then if I open that up, we have a couple of other containers. We have this one holding the thumbnail, this one holding the space in between the thumbnail and the text, and then this one called block basic grid text that is holding all of the content for those block items. Then if we open this one up, we can see that we have the block meta section. Right now, I don't really have any categories or anything showing, so this is not really showing anything on the screen. And then here I have the block title, the block excerpt, and the block more link. Now, to be able to push these buttons downwards, what we're going to do is we're going to be using a Flexbox trick. Now, to be able to apply this Flexbox trick, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that all of the content areas of these block items actually cover the extra space that we have here underneath the thumbnail. So if I go back into this container, let me just pull this maybe a little bit to the side. So here you can see that this block basic grid text is fairly short compared to the space that is actually available there. So if I go back into my article container, you can see that there's a lot of purple space underneath. And just a quick note, in case you don't know this already, that purple space, whenever you see purple space available when we're using Flexbox, that just means that there's extra space available in there that pretty much any of the items that we have inside this container are able to occupy. So the trick here is to make sure that those elements that we want to stretch out actually occupy that space. So to be able to do that, because this is already set to Flexbox, what we can do is target that container that we want to stretch out, which in this case is this block basic grid text, and then give it a flex value of one to be able to make it taller. So let's grab this class. And once again, I'm just making sure that this modification only happens for the block basic grid, although this already contains those keywords in here. So this shouldn't be necessary, but I'm just going to keep it there anyway. And then I'm going to make this flex one. And then once I do that, you're going to see that just by using that little declaration, now this text container is much taller than it was before. You can see that if I disable this and then stand over it, is fairly sort of like short. And then here you can see the other ones too. And then if I set this back to flex one, you can see how now all of them stretch out to cover that extra space available. Now, once we have that in there, what we need to do is make sure that this same container that we have just stretched out is also a flex container because setting this to flex is basically going to allow us to push this button downwards by setting a margin at the top to auto. So let me show you how the trick works. Let's go ahead and go back into our container. So the one that we just made taller, we're going to give this one a display value of flex. We're going to turn it into a flex container. And you can see that by default, everything is just going to sit side by side. So let's go ahead and change that by setting here the flex direction to column. Once we do that, it's going to pretty much go back to the way it was before. But the difference here is that now if I stand over that container, we can see that this one, instead of being completely blue, it now shows that purple space available that we can use to be able to push that button downwards or just make sure that the space is distributed differently so that the button sits at the very bottom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into that block more link. So remember that this is the snippet or the selector that is targeting our button. And then I'm going to add it here, a margin at the top. Instead of making this a specific value, I'm just going to set this to auto. And by doing that, if we take a look inside the HTML, you're going to see that now this button here has occupied pretty much all of that extra purple space with some margin. And so now we have those read more links here at the very bottom of our block items. 
Now, the last thing that I would do in here is add a little bit of a margin to the bottom of the excerpt so that we can still have some space in here while keeping all of the buttons aligned. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and target the excerpt container. So here that would be, here we have the title, this is the excerpt, this is the button. So let's go ahead and target the block excerpt by reusing this class. Once more, I just want to make sure that this happens only for the grid layout. So I'm just going to add that class in there. And now let's go ahead and just add a little bit of a margin to the bottom. So something like 30 pixels. And there we go. And of course, if we take a look here at mobile, you're going to see how everything looks good. We still have those buttons down here. And then of course, because of that 30 pixels at the bottom that we just added to the excerpt, we're still going to get a little bit of breathing room in between the button and the text when we have everything stacked this way. And there you have it. That's how you can style and bottom align the read more links for blog pages in 7.1. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on content just like today's, and I will see you next time.